dear viewers, and welcome to our show today about diet myths. Today we're going to be talking about these food label myths. So I'm sure so many of you have been through the grocery stores and you know, you're strolling around and you decided today I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to shop for these healthy products and I'm going to start a new chapter. Ah, the farmer's market. You can almost smell the post-coitus in the air between the local merchant's fruit stands and the old hippie playing Freebird on his dulcimer. But is what you're buying really worth the price? Let's say you're staring at a cucumber for a dollar and an organic one for a dollar fifty. A thought occurs to you. Why the hell should I pay more for the same look and taste? The difference is inside. Organic foods are made without fun things like synthetic pesticide, chemical fertilizer, and yummy industrial solvent. And they're not genetically modified either. If any of those things matter to you, then you should judge a cucumber by its label and not just its girth. Quick quiz. Organic salmon is healthier. True or false? The answer? Not necessarily. Currently, there's no U.S. standard for organic seafood. What you want is the USDA organic label. These are the Dirty Dozen, the 12 most contaminated fruits and vegetables, meaning they tend to have the highest pesticide residue. If any of these items are on your shopping list, aim to buy organic. Generally, produce with thinner skins and those grown underground are the most vulnerable. Now, you might think bananas are in the clear, but their immense popularity means they're overpicked and heavily sprayed. So consider splurging on organic chiquitas. <laughs> Have kids? Want some? Well, studies show that fetuses are exposed to hundreds of harmful chemicals in utero. The harsh reality is that pesticides can screw with the nervous system. So really, it just depends on how much you love your children. By avoiding petroleum-based pesticides, organic farming leaves the environment cleaner for future generations. But if it's so great, why isn't the whole world on board? Well, not only is organic food more expensive to grow, but there's a question as to whether it's sustainable on a global level. Poisonous though they are, pesticides allow for more food to be grown per acre. Thus, the answer is, the whole world can. So you go enjoy your tasty, organic mango sorbet while the rest of the world burns. Well, you're probably strolling by looking at things, fruits and vegetables. They're all okay because they don't have any labels on them. But then you get to the counter where they have shelved foods. And of course, you see so many counters that say suitable for diabetics or diet food, you know, and then other health claims. Now, it's very important that we know exactly what we're looking at because these health claims can get you into trouble. Now, a lot, a lot of people, you know, think that, okay, if I consume organic food, then, you know, it's healthy. I'm not going to gain weight. So they overindulge in all these organic treats and they end up, of course, gaining weight because a calorie from an organic food and a calorie from a non-organic food ends up being the same. So it's very important that when you do go to these grocery stores for you to take some time to lift the package up before throwing it in your cart and seeing what it actually contains. You'll see many labels like fat free, low in sugar, no sugar added, sugar free. And you think, okay, you know, like they have all these big claims so we can get away with eating so many of them. But that's not the case. And the first one I want to be talking about is sugar-free. A lot of sugar-free products that we see out there, you know, actually do contain carbs. So for any like diabetic out there, you cannot consume a sugar-free product freely. Sometimes these sugar-free products actually have more carbohydrate content than the non-sugar-free um, product. Like we've seen so many biscuits that are sugar-free and non-sugar-free and they both contain the same amount of carbohydrates because there are other sources of carbohydrates besides the sugar. So it's really important for you to look at these foods and actually see is it really sugar-free or not. And now food labels can be very complicated and I know a lot of these health professionals are working on simplifying the food label but you still have to look at it and you still have to watch out what you're eating. I want you guys to stay tuned because we're going to take a deeper look at these food labels and what everything means. Welcome back, our dear viewers. I hope I've given you some time to think 
about these food labels that you've come across or about some foods that you probably recently purchased that say fat free or all these other claims on them. Now, one of my favorite claims that is so misguiding is the no sugar added claim. How many times have you picked up, you know, a juice drink or a fruit drink um, or even like other sugary drinks and it says no sugar added so you feel good about having that juice? Well, that's not the case. No sugar added just means that they have not added any extra sugar, but that doesn't mean that the product doesn't have any natural sugar. Now, we don't have a problem with natural sugars, but excess amounts of natural sugars can help you gain weight. And if that's something you're not looking for, then maybe you should be avoiding these marks. So like we said, it's very important for you to take the product, turn around and look at the nutrition facts and see how many grams of carbohydrates they have, because essentially they will be turning into sugar in your body and see how many grams of sugar are actually in this product naturally. And this will give you an indication of whether or not this is a product you should be drinking. And as a general rule of thumb, we don't like anybody to be drinking their calories. So always stay away from that. And of course, your safer choice is water. It just doesn't contain any calories and you can have as many of it as you want. Now, another really claim that, you know, gets um, marketed as a big claim, you know, and a lot of people believe it and they think, oh, let me go ahead with it and like, let me consume this food. And that's the low calorie claim. You know, this is a low calorie food. Choose this biscuit because it's low calorie. Now, low calorie just means that it has four calories or less per serving. And now it's very important for you to look at the serving size. This is maybe the most important thing in that food label. How many servings are in that package and is that serving size really worth it? So what I suggest you do is go grab a package, look at that serving size, and we'll be back to talk about whether it really is a low calorie food or not. Stay tuned. Welcome back, our dear viewers. So I hope you brought that package and looked at the serving size. You'll be shocked to know, sometimes the serving size is just half a biscuit or one biscuit and they're really small and you're probably going to have five or six of them. And sometimes, if you're lucky, the serving size is more. So if a low calorie food means that there's only 40 calories per serving and you're having something like three servings, that's 120 calories. It's no longer a low calorie food. So you need to think of how many servings you consume. Again, we really emphasize, and especially here at the Sman Diabetes Institute, we take it you know, as a very important task for us to go through food labels with all of our patients. Because once you understand the food label, how to read it, and what every single number means, then you get, a, you get to understand the food better. And then you know what food to shop for. And just because it was, you know, in an aisle that said suitable for diabetics, or in an aisle that said the diet aisle, doesn't mean this is a food you can consume freely. Another thing that I really want to emphasize is to look at the ingredient list and make sure at least the first three or four ingredients are ingredients that you know about, that you've heard about, and that they don't have these bizarre names that you can't even pronounce. Because if you can just guarantee the ingredient list and for it to have low amount of calories per serving, and of course for you to watch out how many servings you're having of that food, you can then be able to eat any food you want because essentially all foods are allowed. And like we've said previously, no food is forbidden, just as long as you know how much to eat of it. And of course, it's very important to, for you to look for foods that are high in fiber. So anything that has around five grams of fiber or more, that will make you feel full, that will make you feel better, and that will actually be even better for your digestive tract. These are some tips and hints that we want you to consider and we want you to look at the next time you go grocery shopping. And you know what? If you can spend longer time in the fruit and vegetable section, that will even be better for your waist. So we hope you actually enjoyed today's lesson and looked um, 
truly through your nutrition facts and your nutrition label and we hope you know we've helped you understand these things more because it is very important for us to know what we're looking at um, and know what we're eating and we'll probably see you guys soon. <laughs>